1993. Mr. Willett, thanks for coming in. It's a pleasure to be here, Bill. Thank you so much for doing these interviews, too. I know there's a lot of focus on things happening nationally, a lot of noise there, but I think what matters most to people really is at the state and local level. So thank you so much well, for I'm glad doing you, these. Could, you can make it in. So tell us, what is this election about? I, I think it's about a, a couple of things. I think in a lot of ways it's about direction for the state uh, in terms of the leadership right now. I think there's common sense or, or agreement, uh, really a bipartisan agreement on a lot of things and some common sense measures, but those things are not getting done because of the current leadership, and I'd like to be part of changing that leadership. So as, as far as, uh, I mean, it's a very evenly divided house that uh, right. delegates that you would be going into. Uh, right. When you say there's a lot of common ground, what are those issues where there's common ground? Because it, it seems to be... We had, for example, the aborted special session that lasted 90 right. minutes. Uh, we thought some gun, gun issues, gun violence issues right. were going to be debated. Uh, what are the common areas that you, well, you see yourself working on? I will, we can start with gun safety. I've spent a lot of time knocking on doors, talking to voters in Henrico, and universally or uniformly folks are concerned about gun safety. I'm a gun owner. I've talked to a lot of gun owners, and they uniformly agree we've got to do more. Common sense things, not taking away weapons, but putting in universal background checks that really are comprehensive, uh, maybe limiting magazine sizes, just thing, things like that, red flag laws. Uh, I hear that from voters who are Republicans and Democrats. I think that's an example. Uh, I'll come back to education. That's another thing I hear almost at every door I knock, every voter I talk to. Um, we have amazing schools in Henrico, um, but we pay our teachers way too low. And, and parents, and even, even non-parents, understand, you know, without taking care of the teachers, you can't take care of the students. Well, and w so where does it, everybody would agree, yeah. hey, let's pay teachers more because yeah. everybody loves teachers, especially yeah. their own teachers. Uh, where does that money come from? Because obviously the budget has to be balanced every year. So right. where would it, you it, find it's, it? It's a prioritization issue. I think it's the best ROI, best return on investment we can make is investing in our schools. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're choices that have to be made, and that's the tough job for, for the legislators to, to do. But I, I think uh, if you look at the return and what happens, you know, putting money into, more money into early child education, more money for more counselors in schools, that's going to pay huge dividends. And there, there really is no better return on the investment. So, but the rub is where that money is going to come from. Because right. you also talk about expanding access to health care right. uh, and also help with drug prices, with prescription drugs. Right. So how, how would you manage that? A couple of things there. The, on the, the state, we did through compromise get to a partial Medicaid expansion. And that's great. They, they made 400,000 more people eligible. Right. Just over 300,000 now have been signed up uh, for Medicaid coverage. That's great. What people forget that there are additional 320,000 who are eligible or would be eligible under normal uh, rules and, and, and with federal funding, they didn't get covered. Would that be if they had the income levels that are used in other states? I mean, because Virginia seems to have a very, very low sort of. It, it would be yeah, it would be adjusting that, but but the feds will pay for most of that, and I think that's what we're the money we're leaving on the table. And again, I think with the right leadership, we could make that change. You you mentioned drug pricing uh, again. Almost every door I knock on, someone has an issue with drug price. I mean, my own parents live in my district. They have Medicare. They have supplemental insurance. They're still paying $1,000 a month out of pocket for heart medications. And I hear that story all too often. The state has a, a role to play there in negotiating drug pricing, drug prices, and helping with that. And I think we can do better. And so these issues, uh, for example, we talk about health care, we talk about guns. Uh, yeah. And schools, uh, yeah. again, I, I don't want to keep coming back to the budgetary things. Right. But but there must be areas where you could see cuts coming, uh, so areas where there is money that could be put into some of these programs. Well, because even with Medicaid expansion, the yeah. state has to put up that 10 percent, you know, the federal government pays 90 percent of it right. eventually. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where the rub is, isn't it? There's some, although I think, again, in the scheme of things, for the number of people who can be covered, we're going to spend money on health care. That's inevitable as a state. I think it's how we do it and how efficiently we do it. There are always rooms for improvement there and process. Uh, my professional background is I've, I've helped either start or, or grow three different technology companies in Virginia, and a lot of that work has been focused with the state and making things more efficient. So I think there are efficiencies to be gained there, and particularly in health care. It's a huge system. And, and the health agencies, I think, are doing an amazing job, but there's more uh, that can be done there, and I hope we can help with that. All right, Rodney Willett, thank you so much for coming in, sir. My pleasure. All right, Thanks. Rodney Willett is a candidate in the House District 73. And once again, as I mentioned earlier, we've invited all the candidates to come on here at the News at 7, and you'll find all the interviews at WTBR.com.